There are fewer soldiers on the streets of Conakry these days. Until several months ago, the military, who have been widely accused of human rights abuses, still ruled the city. This erupted on the 28th of September last year, when security forces killed at least 156 protesters gathered in a stadium in the capital. And as Guinea now prepares for its first ever free elections, for many people the demand is simple. We now want the army to give back power to the civil population because we're scared of the army. There are things you can't say in front of them, but with a civilian there, as a Guinean citizen, I can talk to my president. The army has been a linchpin of successive regimes since the country's independence in 1958. Since then, ethnic divisions have contributed to widespread unrest and any peace in Guinea was often fragile. But General Sukuba Kanate's arrival to power at the end of 2009 sought to change that. Recognised by the international community, he promised to organise a free ballot and hand back power to the civil population. Each soldier is free to vote for whom he wants. There's no intimidation, there's no cult of personality. It's a democracy where everyone is free to choose their candidate without any regulations, threats. There's none of that. The president will be democratically elected and the army will be at his disposition. Hopes are high for a free and fair election but there is still concern about what could follow. Clashes between rival militant groups have already flared as the political campaigns come to a close. The fear is that if violence continues, the army may step in again. If there is violence, that will enshrine power in the army's hands, and that will be their game. If the army stays, we are back to square one. A 16,000-strong police force has been deployed to maintain security during the elections. But Guineans remain confident that for the first time ever, democracy may not be too far away.